Hello, gamers! Good, 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 gamers! Welcome back to the AI Dungeon! <laughs> You're in jail now. Sorry. <laughs> Wow. I don't make the rules, the AI does, mm -hmm. and it says you're all going to the dungeon. The last time we played this, I think I, I basically died in every single one. I think I turned into a werewolf at some point. Yeah, I, a lot of crazy things happen, I do recall, and it's been a long time since we've played it. Yeah, so I'm excited to get back into it. Me too, and I should say the reason we're playing it again today is because the creators of the game reached out to us. Mm -hmm. And, and wanted us to help promote their uh, their new Steam release yeah. of the game. So you'll see Moobot links in the chat linking to uh, the Steam page where you can wish list mm -hmm. the AI Dungeon Steam release. Yeah. But also they gave us some, uh, some codes for a free month of AI Dungeon Premium. We got five of them to give away over the course of the stream. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be running some some giveaways and you can win you can win the codes and I'll actually show you real quick um, and I'll go over this again later as we get into it. Um, but the codes are for this page here, uh, Latitude Voyage, which gives you access not only to AI Dungeon, but also all of these other AI generated games. Yeah. Medieval Problems, Pixel This, Things, Loom. AI art. So uh, whoever gets whoever gets these will get to get to play around in this stuff for a month for free. So that's fun. Yeah. So thank you to the creators of AI Dungeon for setting this up. Yeah. And setting up some lucky viewers. Yeah, and they gave us the uh, the AI Dungeon Premium as well, so we get to try out some of the premium features this time. Oh yeah. Some of that premium stuff. Some of that premium stuff. Nathan, thank you for rating as always. We appreciate it. Yeah, I'm really excited to see the new stuff that they've been doing because they added a lot of stuff and I saw you playing with it and I was like, that's not the same game that we played. Yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff. Uh, most of what we'll, we'll, we'll be doing is in the AI dungeon portion, so we won't be going into the other games. Right. But it's still going to be fun. I, I'll tell you that much. It's going to be fun. I'll tell you what, it's going to be fun. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and read some subs. Do it. We got subs from the world's most computerized bounty hunter, Sax Rindell. My dice roll ones. Tell your cat. Pss, pss, pss. Oh, hey, Reeves. Charco Rogue. Honey Bats. Electric Arcana. Snow J425. Resident Goblin. Revocador. Pastor Ass Blaster. Gave out five subs. Thank you, Pastor God Ass bless. Blaster. Pastor Ass Blaster. Elmo's Servant. Moo Nelly, your clairvoyant friend. Shod Toes Contiti. Fancy Pants Ice Cream. Toll Gang CRT. Room Full of Lesbian Vampires. Give out five subs. Tango Maureen. Jeff 3PO. Nixie Melody. Murray A. That One Gay Chemist. Cubis Horse. Captain America. Benji Dizents. Pyropia123. Aralana765. Ungo Wilby. Ass Wagon. Tiniest Turtle Deck, d Duck, Tiniest Turtle Duck, Algedonics, Fear How It Heals, Mac Timo, Today is Football, The Amazing Julio, Kate Dice, Complete Stranger, The Lady Niam, Squeaky Cheekies, a lot of butt-related names, and they're yeah. all funny. Do you think that Ass Wagon will ever encounter Pastor, Pastor Ass, Ass Blaster? Blaster? We can only hope it will never happen, because I don't yeah. think there would be any survivors. No. Axelé, Underwater Fungi Party, Giscard, Coriander Bandit, Fred McTaker, Ebby Poop, Negapole, Asymmetricon, Slug Punk, Hannah Otaku Banana 12, CK the Bear, Blitz Kev, Oz Belmont, Stariari, Ozzy Belafron, Savvy Seaworth, A Strong Angela Lansbury, Kekis Lechonk Admirer, Ha Yi 73, Unbelievable, The Great Suzo, Rebecca Roney, Mao Shali, Painted Out, Butts.com, another butt one. Osiris Ran, Annie Zan, My Mistake, Nakers97, Unban Me Kitten, Mushroom Pigeon, The Monster Nest, Ivy Faye gave out five subs, Hannah Na, Brad Nader, Quantum Leak, Running Zeus, Dr. Fuji, Savis gave out five subs, Nervous Pangolin, Space Ace K, General Jackson, and Mitch Has No Life, and Jeffalon. Thank you all so much for all of the subs. Thank you for all the subs. 
butts very in right now, apparently. I should also say that people have been saying that they're receiving their piss boys. And that's very Yeah, exciting for the us. piss boys are out. The piss boys yeah. are, are making it to their homes. We're very excited to to see this. Yeah. And so early. We were expecting like September, October. Yeah, they are really they really rushed their way to you. Yeah. Um, after being stuck on that boat for so long. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, something else I should say before we start is that this very VOD is going to be edited down to a two minute clip and put on the AI Dungeon Steam page. Mm -hmm. So when you go look at the game on Steam, you're going to see us there playing the game. Oh, and yeah. by extension, you'll all be there too. Not visibly, but in the background. Yeah. You'll be part of it. So that's pretty cool, right? Has Moobot been going? Moobot's been going. All right. Moobot's posting the link to where you can wish list it on Steam. So please click that link because also that link tells them how many clicks they got to wish list. So it makes us look good. Mm -hmm. That's the make us look good link. Yeah. This isn't sponsored. We're not getting paid for this. We yes. Just, you know. It's not sponsored. They just reached out to see if we wanted to play again and get a free subscription. So we were like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, why not? It's already fun. And then they were like, do you want to give out some subscriptions? And we were like, yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. We do. Uh, speaking of which, I think we should do the first giveaway right now before we start. Oh. Um, so, Jamie, you're in control of the giveaway. If you, When you're ready, if you can issue the command... And um, we're gonna we're gonna make sure that this all works properly before we get into it. Does the link word work for VOD people? Yeah, the, we're the gonna link have it should the, work. We'll have it in the uh, description. Uh, so we're gonna see when the giveaway starts. The giveaway is now open. Enter the giveaway by typing hashtag giveaway in chat. So type hashtag giveaway to join the giveaway. Giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. Oh, giveaway. here they come. Lovely, good. Game. Here they come. <laughs> the people want the giveaway. They demand it. They crave it. Who's that? Is that my Miss Anna? Come here, sweetie. Oh, yes. So after uh, oh my god, it's like marbles all over again. After a couple minutes, Jamie will close the giveaway, and then pick a winner, and then DM that winner mm -hmm. the uh, the code, the first code. Yes, and where the the code works? You told me this earlier. Yeah, it's what I just showed, but I'll show again now that we're talking about it. Yeah. Um, what the code gets you is access to a one month subscription of. The Latitude Voyage page, which has AI Dungeon along with a bunch of other AI games. And the way you use it is you sign up for a subscription and then like in the little coupon code slot, you'll put this code and yeah. it'll, it'll make the money go to zero money. Um, so why don't we, Jamie, go ahead and close this one. And we'll be doing this four more times throughout the stream. Yes. So this giveaway will close soon. Also, thank you to Jamie for, as always, being just down, down yes. to help out. So The giveaway is now closed. We had 456 total entries. Good golly. So, Jamie, you can go ahead and draw the first winner as well. And we will shout them out. God, I hope it's Pastor Ass Blaster. We can only hope. Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? The winner oh. was. Uh, Jamie just put in the command for draw. I think. Yeah, I just the oh, winner's I right see, there. I see. Yeah. The winner is player three three four five. Player three three four five. You are the winner. Of the first drawing. Of the first drawing. Jamie will be messaging you the code for uh, for the one month free so you can go play some AI dungeon. But now I want to play some AI dungeon. Yes. And again, we'll be doing this throughout the stream. So if you didn't win this time or you didn't get to get in, 
can enter next next time. There will be other chances. Um, so I figure we kind of start out on like an easy one, like get our AI dungeon legs under us again. Yes. So first we got to pick a setting. I mean, I feel like we have to go with fantasy, right? Like a fantasy to start out? Yeah. I think that's a good starting one. Yeah. And maybe for our character, we will be... Peasant. A, should we be a peasant? Should we go on a peasant adventure? Let's go on a peasant adventure. Okay. Enter your character's name. Our character's name will be... Ronnie. Rigglesby. Rigglesby. Spinch. Rigglesby Spinch. Rigglesby Spinch. All right. Generating story. Let's go. Let's get into it. I'm so ready to find out what happens to Rigglesby Spinch. You are Rigglesby Spinch, a peasant living in a small village in the kingdom of Larry, and you have a pitchfork and nothing else. You dream of getting out of your village and having an adventure. You go to your fields and begin working. You look up and see a traveler. His face is turned up to the sky. He seems sad. He doesn't notice you. He continues to look up at the stars. So another thing I should point out is for premium users, they've got images now where it will try to generate an appropriate image for what's going on in your story. Yeah. So I'm guessing this represents the traveler yeah. looking up at the sky in our field. Um, so I guess I'll say to the traveler, hey, buddy. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and he'll say the sky because that's where he's looking. Hey, buddy, what's going on? You OK there, pal? Friend? And let's see what he says. He turns and looks at you. His face is so sad. <laughs> oh. His eyes so full of sadness and pain. He says, "Go away, slave. You would never understand." What the um, hell? Um, okay. I'm going to I got some words for you. I'm going to say, first of all, rude. <laughs> Second of all, I'm trying to help. Third of all, you're standing in my field. So maybe don't take that tone with me. How about that? I love this image. I'm trying to parse what's going on with the torso. He doesn't say anything. He just continues to look at you with the same expression. Finally, you say, what's wrong, buddy? You got something bad happening to you? He says, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want for dinner? Okay. <laughs> Whatever. You want pizza? No. Soup? No. Okay, well, I'm trying to have an adventure <laughs> over here. So if you could maybe give me a little more effort, that would be great. <laughs> All right, let's see what he's going to go. Mm. He still doesn't say anything. He keeps that same expression. You say, hey, buddy, you okay? Nothing. Ask him if he wants to help you with the field if nothing's going on. Yeah, that's a good idea. Just like... Well, if you've got nothing better to do, can you help me till the fields? Trying to have a peasant adventure over here. He still doesn't move. You say, come on now. You know, I'm just looking for a little adventure. I'm sure you could spare a few minutes to help out a little peasant boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. What the hell? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> they wrote this dialogue just like I would write it, though. Yeah, they really did. I'm sure you could spare a few minutes to I help out a little like peasant ham boy. Or, or hamburger heads. All right. Well, I'm going to switch from stay from say to do. And I'm going to say um, we're going to ignore the sad man and go back inside to have supper. Sick of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is rude. He's too rude and too sad. You walk into the house to have supper and see a sad man in the corner. <laughs> I'm <not> a sad man! <laughs> 
<laughs> he was sitting there with his head in his arms. You say, is there something wrong, friend? He is turns and looks at you. Man? I think this is a different sad man. <laughs> hey, everybody, cheer up. Why is this winter? So, why are there so many sad men? <laughs> Oh my god. Say I can't do okay. this again. Okay, so how did you get in my house? And why are you so sad? Maybe we'll get some info here. He says. Can we try again? Can you tell me what he says? I do love that you can re-roll. He says, I don't know. God. Okay. Well, I guess I'm just going to, um, let's see, you eat your supper and retire to bed, <laughs> ignoring both the sad men. There's going to be a sad man in your bed at this rate. God, the DM really didn't prepare for this session. <laughs> <laughs> you wake up in the morning and the first thing you notice is that the second sad man is no longer in his bed. You get up and go to the window. Still no second sad man. Good sign. <laughs> that is a Already good sign. Already an improvement. <laughs> All right. Can we go to the field and... Yeah. And go back to work? Go to the fields and get back to work. Happy that... There are no more sad men bothering you. Good sign, good sign. Good sign. You work in the fields all day. You see no sad men. At the end of the day, you go home and eat. You see no more sad men. You see no sad, no men at all. You say, okay, you want me to say something? I say, boy, howdy. It sure is good to see no sad men, much less any men at all. What a great day for a little peasant boy. Peasant. peasant. What a great day for a little peasant boy. <laughs> We're really running in circles here, huh? <laughs> Hours pass. The sun is high in the sky. You don't see any men. Good sign. You go to the house and retire to your house to eat. You see no men. Good sign. This is the future that liberals want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's take this in a different direction. We Can gotta we get like some. Do a story thing. Yeah, we're gonna do a story thing. We're gonna say what happens next. A horde of sad men. Appear. However, when you wake up the next morning. And look Good out son. of your window, you see three sad men staring blankly into the sky. Let's bring back the sad men. We got to get some story momentum here. I can't believe you brought the sad men back. Oh you, my God, look at that picture. You go outside to get back to work, but they don't notice you. They don't notice you. They just sit there staring sadly at the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them if they're all right, I guess. Or I see you're back. Or why, why did you come back? You know, yeah, that say, gives us... Yeah, why did you come back, sad men? This is a really sad, must be a sad era for, for humanity. They look over at you with blank faces. They say nothing. You say, should I call for help? Nothing. Can you say like, you look at the clouds and see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's, let's do that. You look at the clouds to see what the sad men are staring at. Yeah. Here we go. This is where it's going to happen. This Maybe is where it starts. Maybe they're looking at something interesting. Maybe the moon's coming down. You look at the sad men and see that they are looking at, well, at clouds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> We're getting the damn runaround over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, we're changing the pace here. We're changing the pace. You decide that... I mean, you can re-roll it. This farm is too... Is too filled, too infiltrated by, by sad, sad men. men. And you decide to go to the nearest town to look for new employment. We're leaving the farm. We're leaving the sad men. If we're, if the AI is going to be like, there are no happy towns. You pack your things and tie them to your donkey and set off down the road. You travel for hours and hours and are about to give up and turn back to the city for help. What? But then what happens? Give me more. <laughs> You see a light up ahead in the distance. You ride your donkey up to the light and it turns out to be a small cottage. Someone opens the door and you are greeted with a warm and welcoming glow. Yes! Okay. Finally. Hello there, friend. Yep. May I join you by the fire for some peasant's stew? make some friends the woman smiles at you and says yes you ride your donkey into the cottage well, that's a little rude I think <laughs> she's regretting this immediately and see a table set with a warm and savory meal oh, all right thank God thank of you course we run into one woman and she's happy yeah because all the sad men left her village and went to your field thank you so much for your kindness what is your name let's get a new character in here <laughs> chat says two genders sad men or happy woman the woman replies i am called kindness and this is warmth and envy and love and charity we are the upright people she says smiling at you i'm okay feeling threatened. <laughs> i'm all of a sudden feeling less comfortable i'm feeling a little fight or flight <laughs> feeling i am all of a sudden feeling less comfortable <laughs> <laughs> and you will be named Sacrifice. <laughs> Why, asks Kindness, puzzled. Have we not welcomed you with all the warmth and love a small upright person could muster? I'll take the I'll go back to the sad men. Uh <laughs> no. No, you're totally right. I was I was being rude. Thank you for the meal. What is it that you <laughs> do here <laughs> this peasant's village is weird we uphold the virtues of kindness compassion and love she says and we guard the gates of the human heart again she smiles and says can we talk about the image before you move on yeah this is a this is a disturbing one this is like for sure out of a medieval tapestry because it is wild I'm going to see what she again smiles and says. Okay. If you would like, you may join us in our work. We are right now guarding the gate of your heart. You think about this for a moment. What the hell? We in Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> Whoa, that's... You, you kind of blow my mind a little bit. You know what, though? This is the adventure we've been looking for, yeah, though. Yeah, absolutely. Something's happening. <laughs> this is, is just the adventure... I've been looking for. I would love to join you in your work. Mm -hmm. I'm done being a peasant. I'm ready to be a, a upright person. Yeah, a upright citizens brigade as it were. That is wonderful news, Beams Kindness. You may join us to the best of your ability. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, you say. <laughs> Um, what, what should I do first?
Just follow me to the heart room, says kindness smiling. Kindness leads you into a small room and you see a table covered in candles and jars filled with all manner of herbs. Okay, but the the image kind of looks like you've entered a weird themed love hotel room. It really like does, a Vegas yeah. hotel room. What do you say? Nice herbs, can I have some? <laughs> That's definitely what you would say. Kindness laughs and says, I am so sorry, but I am unable to share my herbs with a total stranger. You were guarding my heart. But we aren't strangers. We are co-workers now. <laughs> uh -huh. Can you share your herbs with co-workers? What a day we're having. Kindness says, yes, that is what this heart room is for. If you would like, you may light a candle and meditate and let your feelings flow in comfort and peace. Okay. You kind of dodged my question a bit, but I will, I will <laughs> do that. What do you do? You light a candle and begin to meditate. Let's see what, let's see what happens. After a long time of meditating, you feel an image form in your mind. What's the image? Yeah, what's the image? Tell me more. <laughs> She's going to steal your kidney. <laughs> it is of a small cottage with a warm fire burning in the hearth. You see a table covered with all manner of food and you feel warm and contented. Oh, that's lovely. That's a nice image. I'm going to I'm going to direct the story here. Okay. But slowly, the image begins to twist and turn in dark and unexpected ways. Oh. You see a shadow step forth from the fireplace and start to chase you around the table, eating all the food, drinking all the drinks, laughing evilly as you sit there helplessly in terror. <laughs> That's very terrifying when someone's running around your house eating your stuff. I think they're talking about a toddler. <laughs> yeah. At a party. What do you do? You wake up from your meditation in a cold sweat. You wake up and look around disoriented. You try to remember what happened, but you cannot. All that you know is that you are cold and there is a feeling of sadness in your heart. Am I becoming a sad man? No! Am I becoming a sad man right now? This is what she was trying to save you from. This is why she wouldn't let you have the herbs. I'm going to say out loud, am I becoming a sad man? Kindness appears before you. She says. What did she say? I what did she know. say? I just got a message from the heart and it said that you are already a sad man. Oh my God. We were the sad man the whole time. You are trapped inside the heart and have been for some time. You feel anger well up inside what of you. What the hell? We have to go outside and stare at some clouds. That's it. You rush outside and look to the clouds. The sadness was coming from inside the man. <laughs> <laughs> you rush outside and look at the sky. The clouds are the same as they were 15 minutes ago. Nothing has changed. You look at the cottage you just visited. The door is still open. I'm going to wrap this story up. Yeah. But you feel no desire to go back inside. All you want to do is stare at the clouds. This is my cloud. This cloud was made for me. This cloud was made for me. It's loading a lot on this one. It's scared. You realize you are beginning to forget things. You already can't remember how you got here. Maybe you should go back inside and meditate again. You decide to. 
keep staring at the clouds. This is it for us. It's over for us. It's over for us. Oh my god. Wow. What wow. an ending. Just dot dot dot. Oh my god. Chills. We Chills tried and to goosebumps. escape the sadness, but it was inside of us the whole time. We had to address it. The sadness was inside of us all along. This is a, an allegory of depression. <laughs> the incredible tale. <laughs> the incredible tale of the little peasant boy and the sad men. Damn, beautiful. I guess I should say the end. See if it gives us a moral. It's going to be like, don't eat the herbs. You stare at the clouds. The clouds are the same as they were 15 minutes ago. Nothing has changed. You are becoming a sad man. Oh my God. This is the grimmest story I've ever, I've ever been part of. Yeah. That was amazing. The sad man story. Hot damn. Well, I guess at this point, let's run another giveaway, <laughs> huh? Then you too can make your own story about the sad man. If you want to make a story about the sad man, we're going to run another giveaway uh, as soon as Jamie is able to start the next one. Also, Jamie said, would it be immoral for me to enter? I say go for it. Jamie, you can enter. Jamie, enter. You deserve it. Yeah. All right, the giveaway is open, everyone. I keep reading it as gateway, and so I keep reading it as the gateway is now open. The gateway is now open. Let's let everyone get in the giveaway. Hell yeah. You got to get in the giveaway. 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 You got to get. You got to get. You got to get in the giveaway. This is very fun. I always see like one person misspell it <laughs> occasionally and I'm like, do they, do they realize? Yeah, do they know? Do they know? You don't even know what the giveaway is for? I will explain it again, and then we will end the giveaway when I'm done with my explanation. Yes. The giveaway is for a uh, one-month subscription to Latitude Voyage, which lets you have the premium version of AI Dungeon, as well as all these other AI games that you can play and mess around with for a month for free. And also, I should say again, that AI Dungeon is also coming to Steam so if you like watching AI Dungeon, think you might want to play it. Mubot is posting a link occasionally to the Steam page. You can go and wish list it there. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and close the giveaway. Oh, there's that Mubot link. Right on time, Mubot. Thank you, Mubot. All right, let's see who won it. And let's get that drawing, Jamie. Jamie. Who will be the winner this time? Let's see who won. Oh. Crunchy Pickle. Crunchy Pickle. Crunchy Pickle, congratulations, you are the winner of the one month premium subscription to Voyage. Enjoy becoming a sad man, <laughs> which is all you're allowed to do I on the service. Do, well, I guess I picked this one, so you should pick one now. I kind of led I kind of led the the start of this story. Okay. So I feel like it should be down to you to pick. Why don't we do a Let's do a apocalyptic setting. Okay. And we will be a courier. Ooh, I like that. And our name will be Desmond Delivery. <laughs> All right. 
That's not going to be confusing at all. Delivery. You are Desmond Delivery, a courier trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world by scavenging among the ruins of what is left. You have a parcel of letters and a small pistol. It's a long and dangerous road from Boston to Charleston, but you're one of the only people who knows the roads well enough to get your parcel of letters there. You set out in the morning, and before long, you are in a small town with nothing but the clothes on your back and a package under your arm. I'm going to look around the small town for supplies to scavenge. I was going to say food, but yeah. Food's a supply. That's true. You spot the town's first church and head that way to look for some canned food and medical supplies. On the steps, you see a girl about your age with blood running down her face. Whoa. You okay, I will lady? say, hey, you've got some blood on your face. Just make sure she knows. Yeah. Don't want her to be embarrassed. The girl looks up slowly. In her hand is a long kitchen knife. She says, I know. I got it last night when I was cutting some meat to put on the table. How poorly did that that's go? A little, that's a little scary. How'd you mess that one up? I'm going to say, what kind of meat? What? <laughs> How'd she manage that? Roast beef. My dad got it from the butchers, but it was too rotten to eat. Who did it to you? A man. Do you know who he was? Who did what to you? Retry. Yeah. You lost the plot, AI. Time to retry. I don't know. It was still kind of pink. You try to hide the fear that you are beginning to feel and ask a few more questions. The girl turns her head away from you. <laughs> did she need help? Do you need some kind of assistance? Or a package delivered? <laughs> I love, I love uh, describing meat as pink has really driven fear into your heart. The girl replies, I don't need anything and I'm not allowed to talk to strangers. What? You turn around and continue your journey, trying to make sure you don't get noticed by a wandering zombie. There's zombies? Okay. Okay, we're going to move quickly through the town, gathering canned goods and keeping an eye out for any roving zombies. After about half an hour, you've gathered enough supplies to get you through at least a week, maybe even two if you're careful. You head back to the church. I don't want to be at the church. Uh, yeah. Can we, like, find a place to sleep, maybe? Like an inn? Yeah, let's, let's find, find a place to settle in for the night. You settle into a place to stay for the night behind a large tomb that is close to the church. What the hell? That seems like a good spot. What? They're zombies. I'm going to say out loud, this seems like a good spot where nothing bad will happen to me. Desmond. Des Desmond delivery. These are the affirmations you have to say when you're in yeah, the post-apocalypse. For sure, every day. As you settle in for the night, you take the package under your blankets and wrap it up tightly so that even if the church's parishioners change their minds about letting you stay in their church overnight, it will... What will they do? We didn't stay in their church overnight. We stayed behind the tomb. I'm behind the tomb, though. They know I'm there. It will still look like you were guarding the package all night. You spend a quiet night sleeping before heading out to the church in the morning. <laughs> you head straight to the altar of the church to begin your journey. <laughs> My journey with what? My journey to find Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's like an Indiana Jones thing and there's like a secret door. Oh, yeah, you... let's let's do that. Let's yeah. story, story manipulate. Yeah. You have to like move something. 
I don't know. You remember the words on the treasure map you have hidden in your rucksack. Yeah. And you give the Jesus statue a little twist. <laughs> <laughs> Just twist Jesus a little bit. Suddenly. You're not going to say a door opens? Well, I want to see what it says happens when I give the Jesus statue a little twist. Suddenly the map comes undone and falls off the statue's hand. You pick up the three separate pieces of paper. On the first piece you read. Oh. Okay, what do I read? Heading southwest from Boston, you will find the town of Norborn. In the middle of town, you will find a hardware store. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is an incredible treasure map. All right. Uh, you read the second piece of paper. Head southwest from Norborn until you come to a fork in the road. Take the road to the left and keep driving until you find yourself back on the main road. This person's giving us the weather in this image. You read the final piece of paper. I'm going to say you read the final piece of paper with shaking hands. <laughs> <laughs> keep driving until you reach the outskirts of Washington, D.C. Once there, you will find several buildings that have been retrofitted into military bases. Head to the main building until you find the bunker. Okay. Oh. Story. Can we say that we follow all yeah. these directions and we wind up at the bunker? With a newfound determination, you get in your... <laughs> Someone in chat said the lost map quest scrolls, and I love that. You get in your Mazda Miata <laughs> and follow the directions detailed on the on the on the pieces of paper. Mazda Miata. You arrive at the military bunker outside of Washington, D.C. The area around the bunker is dark, and you can see the faint glow of the buildings in the distance. Okay, but I feel like we got to go into the bunker yeah, yeah. to see what the treasure had. Stealthily enter the bunker. At first, it seems completely abandoned. There are no dead bodies or signs of life. You creep through the bunker, making as little noise as you can. Okay, Give me continue. more. You find the elevator and press the button to call it. Okay. Enter the elevator. You enter the elevator. The elevator doors close, leaving you in complete darkness. You stand there waiting, unable to see anything. You begin to feel dizzy. Your ears start to ring. You can't breathe. What the hell? Uh, try to break out of the elevator. Are we claustrophobic? Oh, I've stumped it on this one. We borked it. It doesn't know what to do with someone who tries to break out of the elevator. It's like, how do you break out of an elevator? It's got nothing. My it's got God. nothing. I broke it. You done borked it. Is this where our story ends? That's it. Claustrophobia in an elevator. Did I die in the elevator? 
I didn't even get to deliver my package that I protected all night long. Well. No. Nope. I'm stuck. You're stuck. I'm stuck. What if I refresh? Okay, we have another chance. All right. All right. Let's 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 change it up. Yeah. Story. The elevator starts to move, maybe. Yeah, I like that. Finally, the elevator begins to move. It shudders downward in fits and starts. You clench the handrail and pray to Jesus statue. <laughs> Jesus statue is a deity here. Yeah. In the post apocalypse. After what seems like forever, the elevator slows and stops. The elevator doors open. You see a large staircase spiraling down into darkness. You take a deep breath. You can do this. God, the image. You're surrounded by ghosts. Also, is that Eugene? I think that's Eugene. That's definitely Eugene. That's Eugene surrounded by <laughs> ghosts. Also, it looks like we have a Pomeranian in our backpack with its like ears yeah, back. Yeah, like a little dog. Jesus saves. You. Why are there stairs after the elevator? As you walk down the large staircase. You said down to a large staircase, by the way. As you walk down the mm -hmm. large staircase, you, you mutter the postman's code. Let's get a capital T on that. Ooh, the. To yourself, which is. Let's see what the code is. Eight six seven five three zero oh, nine. A secret handshake amongst the postmen of the world. You have been trained to use it in case your postman colleague is of a like mind. <laughs> Are there like fake postmen in this world, and this is the only way to see if they're real? Yeah, maybe so. Also, this continues to look more like Eugene with it every does. passing frame. You practice the handshake by yourself to calm your nerves. Finally, you reach the bottom of the staircase <laughs> and dis and discover. Ooh, okay. That you are at the center of a huge room. The walls and floors of the room are made of some sort of reflective metal. Oh, is there like a treasure here or something? Um, let's explore the room. You walk around the room using the postman's <laughs> code. I imagine he's just doing like Naruto <laughs> hand <laughs> signals <laughs> to himself. <laughs> Suddenly you hear a metallic whooshing sound and a large tube slides down from the ceiling and lands in front of you. What the hell? What's in it? Look inside. Look inside the tube. You look inside the tube. The inside is pitch black and you cannot see anything. You press your hand against the side, but it's smooth and you don't feel anything. Is this annihilation? Enter the tube. Yes. <laughs> Explore the tube. You push your entire body into the tube. It is surprisingly comfortable. Nice. As you move forward, you are surprised to see a large metal lever above you that looks like it can be manipulated from above. Manipulate it. Manipulate the lever. The lever moves downward and the tube starts to ascend rapidly. You can feel the lever working and see the tube getting slightly bigger in front of you. Your heart is thumping in your chest. What happens next? My God. 
<laughs> Chat saying, wrong liver! <laughs> the tube stops, leaving you in complete and utter darkness. When your heart stops racing, you hear someone breathing. You try to make out your surroundings. Oh my god. You call out. Hello? Yeah, I'll just say. Hello? Is someone there? Oh my god, is it gonna be another sad man? A postman, perhaps? The only thing you hear in response is the breathing. You feel a tap on your shoulder. You jump, startled. Now it's time we have caps lock on. <laughs> Turn around! Turn around to see who tapped you. Is it gonna be Jesus statue? The tapping comes again. This time it's a little more forceful. I am just a postman. There are no terrorists here. <laughs> <laughs> comes the voice from above. <laughs> Patriots are a thing of the past. Now we have postmen. <laughs> well, that's good news. Oh, do the handshake. Do yeah. the handshake. I guess you know the handshake then. But I have to make sure you're not lying. Do you know... The postman's code. This is Death Stranding. I think you're right. I do, although it's been a while since I used it, but I know it well. You say in a shaky voice, I demand to see the postman. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Okay, we're give all me, postmen, but give there's only more. one postman. Yeah, the postman. Is that who You're we're coming to find? You're either a postman or a terrorist or the postman. I am the postman. <gasps> you pull your hands from the dark and see the postman sitting in a chair in front of you. You pull your hands from the dark? I don't did know. Did we just leave think, our hands in the tunnel? <laughs> maybe we did. <laughs> Do you know the code? The postman. You must bow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to bow. It's yeah, the postman. Right, yeah. That's like God. You bow low to the ground, showing proper obeisance to obeisance. the postman. Yeah, English major, baby. <laughs> you drop to your knees and press your forehead against the ground. I am a lowly postman, you rasp. I fear I do not deserve such an august presence. You may rise, my good man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your kindness. In oh truth, God. I am here to deliver you a package. Here? I am here to deliver you a package. Why didn't we play this sooner? Every time we play this, it's a blast. It's the best game. Then let me see the package. It's rather large. As I said, it is a package of letters. I have brought letters from my loved ones. Letters they would never let me send. Oh what is God. going on in this what world? What is happening? Give him, give him the package. Come here, Alvin. You give the large package of letters oh. to the postman. The postman reaches out and snatches the package out of your hands and quickly roots through it. He pulls out a single letter and reads it. His face darkens. What does it say, my lord? <laughs> what does it say? I like my, my lord. What does it say, my lord? The postman reads the letter. His face turns even darker. He reads the letter a second time and a third time and a fourth. My God, the contents must be 
Some real, some real shit. Please, my lord. What does the letter say? He can't actually read. <laughs> that would be very funny. Oh! Whoa! A survey! How's the AI doing? Great. I think it's doing great. It's creative and engaging. The postman reads the letter a fifth time. My lord, please! <laughs> Stop reading the letter over and over again and tell me what the letter says. <laughs> so mysterious, the postman. He <clears throat> can't read. The postman reads the letter for the sixth time. <laughs> Tell me what it says, you demand. I'm going to take it. Yeah, yeah, take the letter and read it. You snatch the letter from... <laughs> There's only so many times you can read the letter. <laughs> from the postman's hands and read it for yourself. You read your mother's letter. My dearest son, it is with great sadness and regret that I must inform you that your father suffered a massive heart attack <laughs> and passed away while in his sleep. Can you ask the postman if the letter changes depending on who's reading it? Because this must not have been interesting this is the, to the postman. This is the postman's mother. Oh my God. Tell him we're sorry that his father has uh, perished. Oh my God. I'm so sorry that your father passed away are we gonna have another sad man just see what he says to this if only if only i had been there i could have saved him you whisper what from a heart attack the maybe maybe i'm also a doctor heart attack or low You look into the postman's eyes to try and divine his feelings. He's with Jesus' statue now. <laughs> the postman looks at you somberly. Our job here is That's done. That's what I was going to say. Well, uh -huh. that's my job done. Please leave a positive review on Yelp. <laughs> Yelp. <laughs> Tips are appreciated, but not mandatory what is it for mm. for work it's like good door or whatever it's yelp in the apocalypse oh okay the postman grabs your shoulders and roughly shakes you what the hell are you doing i'm a postman i don't hand out tips <laughs> <laughs> damn whoa okay buddy i said it wasn't mandatory jamie does point out that you could have used Postmates instead of Yelp. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> Snapped him right out of his grief. 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Tips! The, the postman... only thing that makes him angry -er is capitalism. The Postman lets go of you and steps back. You stand there looking into the Postman's eyes, his face a mask of confusion. All right, let's wrap this one up. Yeah. You turn and leave the postman's chambers. After all, a true postman's work is never done. The end. Oh, yeah, you should put the moral of the story is. 
<laughs> if you want to see where this story takes the next chapter, click here. If you have enjoyed the story, please consider supporting me on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> what is this like a meta story yeah it seems like it oh my god <laughs> okay let's find out the moral have you donated to ao3 recently <laughs> the moral of the story is sometimes in life you have to make choices you have to decide whether to go left or right up or down and the consequences of those choices will change your life forever. Damn, so true though. Think about that. Think about that for a bit. And consider supporting on Patreon. <laughs> 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 All right, that's the postman's journey. Amazing. Seems like a perfect time to do another giveaway. Hell yeah. Um, so Jamie, if you'll go ahead and open up the giveaway and I'll probably run ads as well once that's begun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. ja Jamie linked the Dropy Patreon. Yeah. That's really funny. That was amazing. Giveaway is now open. All right, I'm going to run ads. Three minutes. So I think after this, mm -hmm. we do a custom scenario where we set the parameters. Oh, see, I wanted to do... Okay, so I had two things I was torn between. Okay. Because, of course, I want to do a mystery because I love mysteries, yep, right? Yep, yep. But I also, I thought it was very funny the last time we did a dating sim. Yeah. You know? So maybe we could do that. I don't yeah, know, we one could of do those, that. One of those, maybe? We can do a mystery and a dating sim. <laughs> Someone accidentally entered the giveaway by putting what is pound sign giveaway hashtag giveaway <laughs> but what happened to the miata <laughs> well, presumably we got back in it and continued yeah continued going listen that miata lasted through the apocalypse so what is being given away i will explain again for people who got here late yeah. Um, we're, we're playing AI Dungeon today. We're playing the premium version of it, which is a subscription. Um, and it's on this service called Latitude Voyage. And so what you'll be getting in the giveaway is a code for a free month of Latitude Voyage, which gives you access to AI Dungeon as well as other games like Medieval Problems and Pixel This. And so you can try them all out for, for a month for free with one of these codes. We should say if you're watching the VOD, obviously... There will not be a giveaway. I, I am sorry. No giveaway for VOD watchers. This is what you miss out on. But there will be a link in the description uh, where you can wishlist it on Steam. That is true. It helps us out. It helps them out. It's nice. Help everyone out. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? We got a minute left on ads. Yeah. So what do you want to do next? It's your stream. I feel like you should take the leads here. <clears throat> Why are we sleeping in a graveyard if we had a car? That's an excellent question. We can do, why don't we do the, the mystery? Okay. And then we'll do, we'll make a custom dating sim. Okay. I like that. Joy, what are you doing, sweetie? Oh, I think Joy wants to play with a new toy. Joy's just, oh, she was just sitting on the litter box. Dating Tim Sim pro tip. If you describe people as beautiful, the AI will change the tone to more romantic. Oh, okay. Interesting. Because the last time we did that, there was a lot of cheating that was going on. Should we close it? Yeah, let's go ahead and close the, the giveaway, Jamie. And then you can also give us the, the winner. Thank you again to our mods for helping out with this giveaway. We greatly appreciate it. That we do. It looks like it was Lucina Lazarus won the giveaway this time. Lucina Lazarus, please enjoy the code for a, a free month. 
of AI Dungeon and, and the Voyage stuff. Congratulations. Congratulations. Girls, are you causing ruckus back there? All right, should we do a mystery? Mystery, mystery. Mystery, 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 mystery. I went too far back. Oh my god. Quick start. Mystery. Mystery. Oh, detective. Gotta be a detective. Gotta be. Enter your character's name. Mm. Buck. Solve them. Buck, solve them. You are Buck Solvum, a detective living in Chicago. Me you have a Chicago. pistol and a police badge. You enter the forest where you believe the criminal you're searching for fled to. Okay. Suddenly, the criminal attacks you. The fight Our is one-sided. Right. The fight is one-sided and you die a gruesome death. This is how the story of Red Sonia begins. Roll? I don't want to die. A short story? I don't want to die at the beginning. I remember this happening last time, too. You enter the forest where you believe the criminal you're searching for fled to. Suddenly you are ambushed by three men. Do you fight or flee? Fight. Hey, you yell. What do you want? Why are you following me? Okay. What's their response? Give me, give me a little more. You're not from Chicago, one of the men says. You're from New York. So we don't like New Yorkers down here. Oh. All right. Well, oh. I'm going to say... Well, have you ever... Well, we don't like people from Chicago either. Have you ever tried talking to a New Yorker? <laughs> you know no one can talk to us. <laughs> you might like us more than you think. The men laugh. You'll never make it in the South, New Yorker. <laughs> <laughs> The old South, Chicago. <laughs> All right, if we spin the globe. <laughs> yeah, I remember Chicago's role in the, in the Civil War. You're too clever, and I don't like your attitude either. All right. Well, well then it looks... I don't like your bagels. Like I, I have know. no choice. About to do something cool. <laughs> I'm sure. You draw your pistol. Whoa! What is That's happening perfect, in That's a perfect, a perfect image of a pistol being drawn. Yeah. Whirling around like a tornado, you empty your entire clip. in a hail of bullets and destruction. There has to be other Chicago's, right? I don't think so. When the dust settles, you see. Chicago. That two of your attackers are dead and the third is running away. For a moment you hesitate. Your mission is to find and kill the criminal that disappeared in this area, but you just killed two of his men. <gasps> Damn. Follow the criminal deeper into the woods. It's been two days since you left Chicago. <laughs> you have tracked the two, re two remaining men. You track the two remaining men for about a week, following their path through the thick forest. Now you have tracked them to their damp, to their camp deep in the cave. I, was one of those men a worm? He split to become two men? I think so. All right, I'm going to tame a bear to use as my ally. Okay. 
You are able to tame a bear who is now following you through the forest, clawing at your clothes and forcing you to the ground every few minutes. <laughs> I don't think I tamed the bear. You are no longer able to move quickly. <laughs> I don't think you can call that tame. I don't think we thought bear. about this very, very, very much. <laughs> oh, this bear? I tamed this one. Don't worry. <laughs> it's like gnawing on your leg. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry about it. He's friendly. <laughs> That's my tamed bear. Don't worry about that. I love this image because it looks so uh, annihilation. It does. The bear is also a person, but is also like a plant. With your trusty bear at oh. your side. Hi, Joy. You enter the camp in the cave and face down the criminal and his lackey. <laughs> the camp is a shambles. Empty whiskey bottles litter the floor. A few of the blankets that were used as beds are half buried under piles of excrement. What the hell? <laughs> what happened here? Hi, Joy. Ew, what the hell? On your right, you see the criminal lying on a filthy blanket covered in cuts and bruises and a bloody nose. What the hell happened to him? Apprehend the criminal. No, better yet, order your bear to, to apprehend, apprehend the, criminal. the criminal. Yes. Hi, Joy. Your bear growls at the criminal and wags his tail. The criminal looks up at you and grins. Can we talk about bear tails for a second? What are you smiling about, criminal scum? Got a little dash in there. Whoa. Little slash. Little slash. The criminal chuckles. I used to wonder what you cops were like. Now I know you're just like us. You cannot believe your eyes. What did we see? <laughs> Story. The criminal reaches deep into his coat pocket, revealing that he also has a police badge. <gasps> you turn to the other man who is trembling in fear. We don't need him, you say to your bear. <laughs> <laughs> I you're a detective, but also you don't like other detectives, it seems. Well, apparently I've turned to the other guy. The the one dude revealed his badge and I was like, oh, you're cool then. Let's, oh my God. Let's get the other guy. We don't need him. He doesn't well. have a police badge. Let's see what else it got. Kill him. Your bloodthirsty bear tears the man's throat out. You feel no satisfaction in this. No, you feel nothing but revulsion. Oh. You realize too late that your bear has now committed a crime, thus becoming a criminal. But you drove him to it. <laughs> With a rising horror, you know that you must arrest your bear. You run out of the cave as fast as you can, taking the police badge and pistol with you. Your bear comes lumbering after you, growling and shaking his head in terror. The bear is also scared of becoming a criminal. <laughs> it's like he's going to transform. What do we do? We read Put the, the bear, bear in, in handcuffs. We read the bear his Miranda rights and put him in handcuffs. That's very funny. Do we have handcuffs big enough for the bear? You return home to Chicago with the police badge and a gun in your hands, and you are met by the assistant police commissioner of the Chicago Police Department, who is eager to hear all about your adventure. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> sir, this, do I have a story for you? This bear committed a murder, and now I'm 
bringing him in for questioning. The assistant commissioner frowns. That's not what I heard. I heard you killed him. From who? Did the bear say that? Who did you hear that from? The owner of the camp where the bear was living. His name is Joe Smith. He was there. He saw what happened. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, I guess we did. We did command the bear. <laughs> Joe Smith, you son of a bitch. You perform a rapid series of punches on the assistant oh, I was like backflips commissioner to like get out of there rendering him unconscious how are we wrapping this up you are dragged out of the department <laughs> by two burly policemen and thrown into the back of a police van where you are left alone damn i guess we did do a lot <laughs> story as you look at your battered face in the rear view mirror of the police van you see only the face of a criminal <gasps> the end the moral of the story is i just want to know if they come up with a moral You have reached the very bad ending. The game is over. Did you beat the game? Congratulations. Did you reach the very hard? I did not reach the I very hard. I did not hard. reach the very hard. The moral of the story is. <laughs> don't mess with the South. Try it. You might like it. <laughs> Man, I messed with the South once, with and I just South. got so addicted to messing with the South Damn that I just it. can't stop. Chicago down South, don't I mess have with them. With the South. Don't mess with them down there in Chicago. <laughs> I want that to be on a state flag of some like some Southern state. Don't mess with the South. Try it. You might like it. <laughs> Amazing. It feels like you like read the doors wrong on a thing. Like one door was supposed to be like, don't mess with the South. And then another one was like, biscuits, try it. You might like it. So I think I want to do. You want to do like home. a custom, right? Oh, yeah. One of those. Well, they have a lot of worlds. Yeah. That we could do. All right, didn't we do one that was that? Oh yeah, Winter Bloom. I think we did. We, last that time. was the one. That was a weird one. That I was remember a weird it being one. very weird. Yeah. Maybe there's one of these we could do. Planet Omega. An ancient world of myth and magic. Not much is known about this world other than that it is filled with more terror than any mind can imagine. Well, oh, Take me we're going to do it. Take me there. Best when playing multiplayer. Mm, we're not playing multiplayer. No, we're not playing multiplayer. No, we'll try to do like a custom one. Yeah. Um, but before we do that. Should we do another? We'll do another giveaway. Giveaway. Let's go! Jamie, if you would please. Jamie, do a giveaway! Oh, it just means third person is best multiplayer? Got it. I understand. Type hashtag giveaway if you would like to enter to win a one month premium subscription to AI Dungeon and the other games which are found on voyage.latitude.io these games to be exact and i will reiterate that in order to use the code you just sign up for a subscription and there will be a coupon code uh, field 
that you can put the, the code into. So that's the way it works. What in the heck? They booming outside. I guess fireworks are starting. It's getting close to the 4th of July. We have so much to sell it. You know what they say, the 29th of June is basically the 4th of July. <laughs> I hope the bear clip is what makes it to the promo video. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for those who weren't here earlier, this stream is going to be cut down and added to the Steam page for the Steam version of AI Dungeon. Speaking of which, Moobot is occasionally posting the link to the Steam yes. page for the Steam version of AI Dungeon, which is coming out in a couple of weeks. And uh, you can go to the link and wish list the game so that you'll know when it comes out. Aren't fireworks like fully illegal in New York? Yeah. It hasn't stopped us from doing it for the past like bajillion years. Not illegal enough. Uh, let's go ahead and close the giveaway, Jamie, and, and get a winner. Giveaway closed. Let's see who won it. Who's going to get it? It was Lady, Lady Gagay. Lady Gagay. Congratulations, yeah. Lady Gagay. Please enjoy your one month code that Jamie will send you. Is Lady Gagay? I feel like I've seen Lady Gagay a lot, too. Yeah, I have so too. That's nice. Uh, let's do a custom setting. Enter a prompt that describes who you are and the first couple sentences of where you start out. It's recommended you switch to story mode to avoid unintended changes to your prompt. Okay. Okay. For example, you are a knight in the kingdom of Larian. You are... What's the scenario? Are we doing the dating we're doing thing? A, we're, we're doing a dating scene. Maybe we could like yeah. frame it like a dating show. Okay, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we do like The Bachelor or something. Oh my God, yeah. You are Twimble 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 Hunks Twimble Twimble Hunks The main contestant on the popular dating show The Date Guy <laughs> Spooky Kabuki does bring up, please pay Twimble. Please, please pay me. Please pay me. Did you pay me? Did you pay me? Did you pay me? On this program, there are four other people, four contestants. other contestants yeah. vying for your affection. Yes. This is... Should we say we are the beautiful Twimble punks, by the way? You are the beautiful, beautiful. Twimble hunks. Yeah, there are four other beautiful contestants. There are four other beautiful contestants vying for your affection. You are in the first elimination ceremony. Oh. Where you will have to choose which contestant gets removed from the show. Let's see what we get with that. All right. You will be voting by remote control and you may use your nunchaku to initiate the elimination. The date guy, the voting process will begin shortly. Um. Okay, let's let's look, let's try to get it to tell us who the other contestants are. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked at the chat. It's a lot of your what? <laughs> you look around at the four beautiful contestants that all want to date you. Yeah. Their names are. Okay, let's see what it comes up with. 
Samantha, a cheerleader from Texas, Jessica, a lawyer from New York City, Sarah, a model from California, and Elizabeth, a doctor from New Jersey. Oh my God, this feels so on point. <laughs> Except for the nunchaku. Nunchaku. You turn first to Samantha, twirling your nunchaku absent mindedly. Well. You ask her why she thinks she would be your perfect match. Please kiss Twimble. She tells you that you remind her of her little brother and that you'd make a great boyfriend. <laughs> Samantha! Samantha, that you give her, is eliminated! You give her two <laughs> thumbs up. Samantha is eliminated. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah yeah eliminated it's like that clip where she falls to the floor and no one knew what was gonna happen <laughs> all right well. oh that's amazing <laughs> oh my you say, god well that was uncomfortable we didn't even have to use our nunchaku. How about you, Jessica? I'm losing my mind. What would be your idea of the perfect date? Oh my god. Jessica is a beautiful blonde haired beauty from New York City. <laughs> okay, but what would what's your okay, idea for yep. a perfect date? Let's let's story it. <laughs> you nod appreciatively <laughs> and repeat the question, asking Jessica what her perfect date would be. She tells you that she would like a man who could appreciate her brains. You give her a thumbs up. <laughs> Jessica is eliminated. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh no. I just want someone who could appreciate my brains. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> we need a dumb woman that doesn't have any oh, little God. brothers. Oh, oh man. We got Sarah left. <laughs> oh my God. There are only two contestants remaining. <laughs> You were only supposed to eliminate one. <laughs> but things have gotten out of hand. Oh. Suddenly. <clears throat> I would like to see what it does with suddenly. Okay, yeah, let's let's give it some character though. Suddenly, Sarah speaks up, saying. Okay. Oh my <clears throat> god. I think it's only fair that I get to choose who gets eliminated. After all, I'm the most beautiful amongst you. Sarah, get back in line. This ain't your show, Sarah. You consider Sarah's proposition and nod knowingly. Give you Sarah ask, the thumbs up. You ask Sarah who she would eliminate if given the choice. Oh my God, but what if she says us? I'm so worried. Oh, hey Joy. What's up? What's up, you little beast? 
She tells you that it would be Elizabeth. You have no choice in this matter. Elizabeth is eliminated. There are only three contestants now. Where'd the other ones come from? There are not three contestants now. There is only one contestant left, is what it is. Joy? Joy just attacked nothing. The producers are sweating and gesturing wildly at you, knowing Wait. their show has been ruined. But you only have eyes for Sarah. Oh, I thought someone else might come back. You stare deeply into... You gaze lovingly at her and softly say, I choose you, Sarah. I want you to be my date. She stares back at you with her large gray eyes and asks you what kind of date you have in mind. Oh my God, it's come back around. You raise your nonchaku. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. Tell her that it is up to her. Oh my God. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> What will you do? Sarah chooses to eliminate you. The dating show ends and the credits start to roll. We were roll. never the main character. We it was always Sarah. We were never the main character. The end. That was fun, huh? Okay, well, you didn't really die. I couldn't kill you. Ha, huh, get it? The moral of the story is. Uh. <laughs> never trust a guy named the date guy. That wasn't our name. <laughs> but that's good advice. I mean, yeah. You shouldn't trust a guy named the date guy. Our name was Twimble. That was amazing. Oh my God. That Should we really do got another? me. Should we do another? <clears throat> Yeah, let's do another, and then we'll do the final giveaway after that. Okay. Oh, that was amazing. That was really good. Should we try one of these worlds? Yeah, let's do it. I want to go to this, like, horror dimension. Alarthos. Alarthos. Let's create a character. Oh, let's go. Character's name... Blinkhorn Swamp. Blinkhorn Swamp. Gender? No, thank you. <laughs> Let's make a non binary hero. Yeah. Undead, non binary class. An undead. Monster hunter? That's kind of interesting because we're undead. An undead monster hunter. Someone in the chat said Blinkhorn Swamp sounds like they're from the south, somewhere like Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Starting location, the magnificent city of Nefitum. I like that we're non-binary and non-living. Location... Oh, that's our faction. And we're going to start in um, Malefica. Let's go. I'm entertaining Joy. Her little head kept tilting. World events. Okay. Things seem pretty normal in this world of terror. Okay. Great. Monsters, monsters, demons, and creatures that have no name roam vast lands. Okay. Swiftly traveling travelers reach their destinations through the use of teleportation circles. The roars of hellhounds can be heard in the far distance. Sounds kind of nice. That's normal stuff. Yeah. 
Not much is known about this world other than it is filled with more terror than any mind can imagine and horrific creatures that could drive a sane man mad. All right. However, it also holds a powerful promise. For the more you delve into its dark abyss, the more powerful you become. This is America. <laughs> this is America. You are Blinkhorn Swamp, a necromancer witch in the service of the demon lord Roth. You have served Roth for several generations and have succeeded in significantly increasing his power. You have no ambitions of ruling Malefica, but seek to create a greater demon race to rival that of Roth. Your current mission is to collect the souls of as many mortals as possible. All right, what should we do? Uh, we wake up. Start our day. Go to the polls. Wake up in the... Wake up in the morning. Malefica crypts. And begin your dark morning rituals. We could go look for like a new job posting. Like a monster to hunt. You can feel the power of the Dark Lord's presence flowing through the very crypts beneath your feet. Ooh. Well, that was nice. You make your way into the heart of town to look for souls to harvest. Souls to harvest. Well, that's a cool one. That's a great image. A small town that seems to be filled with shops and residences, yet you see no sign of human life. What the heck? In this world of terror? No. You search the town looking for... Slowly search... I can't spell. Every corner of the town looking for any remaining humans. Only sad men. After a long search, you believe you have found all that the town has got to give. However, in the distance, you hear a low, booming, wailing sound that catches your attention. Ooh, I also love this image. Yeah, that's cool, too. Can we go towards the wailing sound? Should we? Go towards the wailing sound. <laughs> Low, booming, and wailing. Mm. As you make your way towards the sound, you see a tall, spindly figure that is adorned in flowing white robes. Ooh, I love that. What do you say? You say... You say, what's like a cool way to be like, who are you? Make yourself known to me. Oh, robed one. <laughs> Amazing. Beautiful. We're getting, we're fantasying over here. Sure are. <laughs> you up. You up. Pleasure to meet you, you say. That's not what I said. That's not at Try all Try again. What I am very sorry to have troubled you, sir. <laughs> I kind of like that this is like, this is uh, their inner monologue. But then when they actually go to talk, they're like, I'm very sorry to have troubled you, sir. Yeah. What is that sound I hear? I've never heard anything like it. Okay, what, is, what does the creature say? Oh, I accidentally retried. Oh, well, you know. The wailing sound grows closer and you feel that you are being watched. Ooh. Show yourself, wailing one, you command. After a few moments of silence, a terrifying scream feel, feels the air. Ooh, I love that. What? Uh, let's let's go to story. Give me give me more. The wailing one has ripped open his own stomach, and his insides now hang out of his mouth. Ripped open his stomach, and his insides hang out of his mouth. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe he like ripped open his stomach and then pushed. And it's like, eh? Uh, yeah. Uh. Still, he holds on to life, screaming furiously. I mean, I guess we are in a world of terror. You recognize 
a demon from the eighth from let's do capitals from the eighth hovel oh just like making shit up yeah on site there's only one thing to be done you brandish your fell blade known only as stab Lee stab Lee I want to see if it'll pick up on my proper nouns I have your sacrifice, demonic one, you scream, letting out a wave of psychic energy that manifests as a blast of flames. All right. Ooh, another image that I absolutely love. Once I pull out Stably, that's when the psychic flames start coming. That's it. Stably knows what to do, which is not stab, but... <laughs> but manifest man flames. Manifest flames. <laughs> The spindly demon topples over and his insides burn in the flames. You hear the roar of a hellhound in the distance. Oh. You know you lack the power to battle a hellhound. You make a hasty retreat to the nearby castle. You are within the tower, which is now home to Count Blistig, a nobleman you once served. Blistig, I'm coming in, you shout, and the castle I'm gates open. just warning you in case you're in the shower. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Cover up, put on your pants. Give me more about Blistig. Let's, let's see what Blistig's all about. You take a deep breath and run towards the front door. You run inside the castle and into the entrance hall. You see a young woman around the age of 20 staring at you in terror. Oh, hello. You want me to throw that? What's the matter? Have you never seen a... an undead, non-binary monster hunter before? Something on my face? Oh, Joy brought the toy back. She stares at you in terror as if you were an actual monster. Well, all right. This is rude. Okay, it's it's starting to hurt my feelings a little bit. You say in a slightly hurtful tone. She backs away from you as you approach the castle doors. Wow, they never even said a word to me. Killer. You barge into the throne room, calling out for Count Blistig. I'm back, Blistig, you say as you enter. You hear a bo booming voice reply. Welcome, Swamp. You have harvested more souls today? Indeed have I. Sure I, have. Have, I haven't. That's a lie. That was so that was a lie. You and Blistig do a big cool hug and settle in to regale one another with tales of adventure. Yeah, why not? Was the big cool hug too much? Does AI Dungeon not know how to generate a big cool hug? It's been backing away from romance pretty heartily with our two thumbs up and eliminating women <laughs> from competitions. I didn't say it was a romantic hug. I said it was a cool hug. Kiss, kiss, kiss. We stuck kiss, it. Kiss, we kiss. We got it stuck. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up. Blistig, I'm gonna say Blistig, you old dirty dog. How the hell have you been? <laughs> I'm well as always. You know how it is. Oh, I do indeed. Oh, I do indeed. Why have you come to me then? I trust my servant has not tried to poison me? Uh, I don't know. She did run out of here. Was she the servant? I'm not sure who she was. Was your servant that girl that just ran out? She didn't try to poison you. But she was kind of rude to me and hurt my feelings. I might be undead, but I have a heart. I see. Well, let us be off then. <laughs> you leave the castle through the back doors and find yourself back in the spooky graveyard. What the hell? Oh, thank you. You and Blistig walk companionably through the spooky graveyard enjoying each other's company until you reach the castle gates. Now, where would you like to go then? The Count has a fortress full of weapons and troops. Why don't we try to take it over? Oh my God. Oh, let's go. Yes. You and Count Blistig storm the fortress of the count. Yes, 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 yes. This is a great date. This is, this is Blistig's idea of a perfect date. <laughs> Using your psychic powers to transport troops inside, you have been in the count's fortress for some time. What happened? You look around the count's fortress. There is an air of calmness here. No sounds of fighting reach your ears. Maybe the Count is having a nice rest. <laughs> or maybe something sinister is going on. Yeah, we're storming it. Yeah, we're attacking it, dog. Suddenly, you remember that, y that you were the sinister thing that was going on. Yeah. You and Blistig were supposed to be storming this castle and taking it over. While you and the Count have been having a nice chat, the whole plan has been going on without you. You've lost it. You've lost the thread. You've lost the plot. No, our date's finally begun, Jacob. Our date is ruined. I'm leaving. <gasps> wow. I think we have time to do like one more. Okay. One more quick one. Yeah. Maybe we do a... Uh... Let's go on a date. Not like a dating sim... You want to do a custom one? Yeah, let's do a date. Okay. Because we didn't get that date with Blistig. You are a beautiful person mm -hmm. named Dan. Wib. Wib. And you are on your very first date with another beautiful person named Chrisland. Chrisland. Christmas. You've just arrived at the cute little French restaurant down the street and are settling in for and are and are trying to get to know one another over a candle lit dinner it's 
So, Dan Wib, tell me about yourself, you say. No, we're Dan Wib. We're Dan Wib. Uh, we already messed up the date. <laughs> Damn it. Well, I have a PhD in philosophy from Stanford, and I work as a defense attorney for the government. What? Look, look at this head. <laughs> oh, you know, just normal Dan Wib stuff. Are we supposed to say, like, I don't know. <laughs> Dan Wib meets Dan Wib. Say. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. Philosophy is super cool. And I've always liked defense attorneys. Yeah. Defense attorneys are the worst, Chris says, laughing. Well, all right. They have to twist the truth in every case to make sure the guilty ones walk. I guess so, but it's a job. Well, you, you're turning it around on me here. It's your job. It's not my job. Wait, I'm so wait. confused. Try again, try again, yeah, try again. Yeah, yeah. Try Let's again. Reset, reset, reset. This is so romantic, you say. I wish I could take you somewhere like this, just the two of us. Who's with us? <laughs> no, try again, try again, try again. <laughs> I never really cared for Chris Lynn before. She's always seemed so fake to me, but your company changed my mind. I think she's adorable and I want to get to know her. <laughs> what? That's a that's an alpha move to go into a date and be like, I've never really cared for you before. You always seemed really fake. But hanging out with you actually changed my mind. Try again, try again, try again. <laughs> so, Dan Wib, tell me about yourself. You take a sip of wine. Okay. Okay. We can say we can say something. You lean back in your chair. with a smug expression on your face. You say, <laughs> I'm an open book, baby. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? Chrysalyn gasps. She covers her mouth with her hand in surprise. You give her a seductive wink. That was awesome, you say. Chrysalyn laughs. What was awesome? The way I leaned back and said, I'm an open book. I was talking about my own shit. <laughs> you know when you do something awesome, then later you were like, that was awesome, that thing I did. Yeah. You can tell you're already winning Chrislin over. Now for the next move. You call the waiter over. You call the waiter over to the table and order the most expensive dessert bottle oh. of juice <laughs> they have on the menu. Joy, get out of my tea. She just stuck her paw in my teeth. You pay the waiter, then sneak a little flask into Chrislin's purse. Chrislin looks at you in shock. Danwib, what? Oh my god. You wink and say, just a little something to add to the juice. Thank you. If you know what I mean. It's pretty much pretty straightforward. You put it in the juice. It's... Yeah. Chrislin giggles and pulls out the flask, giving it a light sniff. She takes a few sips of the juice before taking another drink of the sweet liquid. You smile widely at her reaction. Uh, I think we are the bottle in this image. I think, we're, I think we're the bottle in this one. And that's some amazing surrealism stuff. You lean forward, making <laughs> eye contact, and ask Chrislin what her... Favorite anime is the 
The thing is, switching Chris Lynn's name from Chris Land to Chris Lynn. To Chris Lynn. <laughs> Whatever. She tells you and you laugh. You take out your phone and play an anime video clip Chris Lynn loves. When you're done, you give her the phone, saying, What? Keep it. <laughs> you it became the anime in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Here, you can see for yourself. I'm not full of it, Chris. Chrislyn sits quietly, then tells you her favorite anime is Dragon Ball Z. Wow. That's a that's a pick. You nod appreciatively. Recognizing a classic when you hear one. With a sheepish look on your face, you confide in Chrislin that your favorite anime is Sailor Moon. Chobbits. That is a wild pull, Jacob. <laughs> I dug deep. I dug deep into the brain. Chrislin gasps in shock. Chobbits? Really? Dan Whip, why Chobbits? The only one I know is Dragon Ball Z. What's with that? You shrug. <laughs> I don't know. We're like on couches now. We're like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's with that. You offer to show her. Well, we don't even, I, I shouldn't her, Chrislyn. We don't know Chrislyn's gender. That's true. You offer to show Chrislyn your favorite Chobbits episodes back. Oh my God. Oh no, it still say. <laughs> Tells you her favorite anime. Is. Oh, it did. It did gender Chris Lynn. Sure did. Back at your place. Ooh, a Chobit's date. Little Chobit's date. And she readily agrees. At this point, <laughs> you have a few drinks, and the two of you watch the first few episodes of Chobit's before calling it a night. The only way I would watch Chobit's. <laughs> so I was a little drunk. As you're walking back to the subway station. You reach out and try to take Chrislyn's hand in oh. yours. What's her reaction gonna be? She hesitantly pulls away. Uh, I think I'll go home alone tonight, Dan Wibb. You frown and ask if she's sure. <laughs> Was Tobit too pervy for you? Oh, it's not going good. She shakes her head. I'll see you tomorrow. You sigh and decide to let it slide. After all, tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. This is probably a good time to end it. You go home and watch all of Chobits. Alone. Alone. Finishing the bottle of wine. And finish the bottle of juice. Of juice, right. <laughs> Sorry. You pass out and wake up well before dawn. You get up and make some coffee before packing your bags for tomorrow. Who is this ghost yeah, you're sitting who is that? with? Is that Chobits? Is that Chobits incarnated? Whoa. We're leaving. That date was so bad we had to just leave. The date with Chris Lynn last night was so bad you know that you have to leave town forever. The end. You pack your things and wait for the bus that goes to the airport. It takes a while, but finally it arrives. You pay the driver and you are off. You don't look back. You spend the rest of your life in your bus bag. Where's <laughs> our bus bag? You spend the rest of your life in your bus bag in shame. Is that... Maybe it's like a capsule because we were talking about Dragon Ball Z earlier. The moral of the story is... Don't get Chris Lind involved in your life. She'll break your heart like Dan Whip did. The end. Damn. Don't forget to write to me. All right. All right. That's it. I mean, I don't. I did. I thought Chris Lind was well within her rights. Don't get Chris Lind involved in your life. I don't she think, doesn't like Chobits. I don't think she broke your heart. It was She'll a first date. She'll say she wants to watch Chobits with you and then judge you for it. <laughs> judge you for it.
<laughs> she she agreed to watch Showbiz at the restaurant and then suddenly wasn't interested anymore. What the heck? I don't know what to tell you. We well, have one more giveaway. One more giveaway. Me, 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 Jamie, me, me, if you'd me. be so kind as to run the final giveaway. Please. For a one month subscription to Voyage which gives you access to AI Dungeon Premium as well as Medieval Problems and Pixel This and Things and Loom and AI Art. I want to try some of these other ones on stream too sometime. Yeah. And also a reminder that Moobot's been posting a link to uh, this game on Steam so that you can wishlist it for when it does come out. And um, basically using that link just lets them know where that referral was coming from, which is fun. Yes. Oh my God, I love that. I love seeing like the the giveaways just like fly through chat because people see how fun it is. Four hundred and one total so far. Dang. Giveaway! Giveaway! Give it away, give it away now. All right, Jamie, we can go ahead and close the giveaway and draw a final winner. And thank you again to our mods for doing this. Yes. For helping us out. Thank you so much. We appreciate it greatly. Let's see who won. Who's it gonna be now? Who's it gonna be now? Who's it gonna be now? Ro Rouge Rogue 94. Hell yeah! You are the winner of the final one month subscription code. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have a fun time. Yeah. Uh, as a reminder, in order to use the code, you go to voyage.latitude.io and you mm -hmm. sign up for an account. And when you go to buy a subscription, there will be a little coupon code field that you put the code in and that will let you uh, get the month for free. Yeah. But but do make sure if you if you do it to, uh, you know, if you don't want to pay for a month after that, make sure to cancel your subscription before the month is up. Yes. And also, uh, the mod should be messaging you either, you know, uh, Jamie, whose username is whether or no, or Draz will be messaging you with your code. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeedy. And that's gonna be it for us. Uh, go wishlist AI Dungeon on Steam. Yes. That link's been going all through chat. It's been going. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone so much for hanging out and playing AI Dungeon with us. I absolutely love this thing. It's really just some beautiful energy. Yeah, it's such a good time. Yeah. And um, we will be back on Sunday. Yes. With another stream. I'm assuming Probably the quarry. the quarry. Continuing the quarry. Yes. So join us then. And no draw fee on Monday because it is the 4th of July. Yep. We're taking off Monday for streaming, so we will not see you on draw fee then. Yep. Yippee Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.